So the RESPON trial is a phase three prospective randomized trial in patients with polycythemia vera, but specifically in the category of patients with polycythemia vera who become intolerant of or are refractory to the most commonly used cytotoxic drugs for the management of the disease that is hydroxyurea. So in these patients, the response, three, the response trial assessed the uh, efficacy and the safety, of course, of ruxolitinib, that is a JAK1 and JAK2 inhibitor, against best available therapy with the objective to control hematocrit and reduce the spleen. Well, in this category of patients that are considered high-risk polycythemia vera, you, according to the current uh, guidelines, you are suggested to use not only phlebotomies, but cytotoxic drugs, because these patients are at high, very high risk of developing thrombotic events. In addition, most of these patients that are refractory to conventional treatments have an advanced form of polycythemia vera, so phlebotomies alone is not enough. Well, in this study, we had evidence that ruxolitinib was able to produce a control of the major endpoints of the study that was a composite endpoint. That means the proportion of patients who obtain the target control of hematocrit, that means less than 45% in the absence of phlebotomies, and the reduction in the spleen volume of at least 35% from baseline at week 32. And we found that the proportion of patients in the ruxolitinib arm who obtain the composite primary endpoint was 21% as compared to 1% in the best available therapy. Well, the mechanism is very closely associated with polycythemia vera and its mutational status because we know that almost 100% of patients with polycythemia vera have mutation in this gene that is called the JAK2, and these mutations make the protein, the JAK2 protein, to be continuously active rather than being regulated, and therefore cells, the hematopoietic cells of these patients are able to grow up without the normal control of growth factors. Therefore, the activation of JAK2 results in an overactivation of the cells, the signaling within the cells, and ruxolitinib being able to target the activated JAK2 protein stops the, this abnormal proliferation of the cells. Yes, it was a good result, but particularly you have to also consider that 77% of the patients in the ruxolitinib arm obtain at least one of the two major components of the primary endpoint. That means that 60% of the patients in the ruxolitinib arm were able to obtain the target control of hematocrit in the absence of phlebotomy as compared to 20% in the best available therapy group and also 38% of ruxolitinib treated patients as compared to only 1% obtained the reduction in the spleen volume. Well, the therapy was really well tolerated and if you consider the rate of adverse events for year of treatment, this was half in the group of ruxolitinib as compared to best available therapy and in particular there was no novel um, effective uh, adverse events as compared to what has come out from the comfort one and comfort two studies that are the two phase three studies that led to the approval of ruxolitinib for the treatment of myelofibrosis. So no new signal. This was one of the additional endpoints of the study. Uh, and the additional endpoint was to measure the proportion of patients who had benefits from ruxolitinib in terms of symptoms that are associated with the disorders, and uh, almost half percent of the patients in the ruxolitinib arm as compared to 5% in the best available therapy group were able to show an improvement in the symptoms. Well, the clinical implications, I think, are important for this selected category of patients because we have to stress again that this study was done in patients with polycythemia vera, high-risk patients who were refractory or intolerant of hydroxyurea. And so in these patients that represent an unmet therapeutic need in the field, I think that ruxolitinib really may represent a new option for treating these patients. Mm.
we also have to mention that one additional finding, in my opinion, very important finding from this study, was that the rate of thrombotic events was lower in patients randomized to ruxolitinib, only one event as compared to six events in the best available therapy group. So this really opens new avenues for the use of this agent in the treatment of patients with polycythemia vera.